Here we go with the Saturday racing, continuing a featureless uh, weekend. Uh, we are building up to the big features in a couple of weekends. The time it is uh, racing on the inside track of Turpentine. It has been a tough week uh, thus far as of Monday when we started in KZN. That was in Peter Madsburg right up until yesterday. Uh, of course, we are recording for Saturday on a Friday morning, and that was uh, on uh, the classic track at the Vol. Please get in touch with us. So we are uh, we have uh, our X handle displaying at the bottom of the screen, and we are available on the uh, WhatsApp our number also uh, scrolling at the bottom constantly. But uh, we have the magic man uh, with us uh, this uh, morning. It is uh, Mr. Darren Burrows. Darren, we need your intervention, brother. It has been tough, and we really need to replenish our resources, which have been badly depleted as of Monday right through to yesterday. Good morning to you. Good morning, uh, Cecil. Um, on uh, when was it? Wednesday uh, yes. at Gravel. I actually tipped it off blazing light quite strongly, and he shortened from eight to one into twenty-eight to ten. Yeah. yeah. And he won, and Miss Paget also. So uh, we didn't have a bad day that day. We were one out the pick six with one Irish Rover. Yes. Where I should have gone two runners. But uh, besides that, the week has been very difficult. It has been very difficult, but I'm sure you can get us out of it. Let's get straight into our bipod at uh, Turpentine. We're on the inside track. It's over the 1450, a maiden juvenile plate. And in the betting right now, we've got a once race and a very good debut from uh, the informer Roy Magna trained number five. Kamansky, that is now at uh, 14 to 10. 15 to 10 is the eight. One party. Four to one is the four. That uh, Please correct me if my pronunciation does not suit. But it is a used to drug slut that is first time a number four from the Alec Led stable. Nines and better. How are we going to negotiate this up bipod and leg one, sir? Well, uh, Cecil, I played four runners to double up. Um, I thought that was the best route to go because I don't want to go two runners and then go out. So I'd rather double up with four runners. The source Kamensky, good debut, beaten five lengths, though. There's been no winners from the form line. Um, but can only improve. You've got one party that's run two thirds from two starts. Never went on last time out. I don't know how the trip's going to suit or not. Uh, the first time a year's Drugsluit, a master of my fate, first time out of a dynasty mare. Lovely pedigree, beautiful draw. And then flight engineer. I've included this uh, Tony Peter runner. Uh, very disappointing on debut, but um, could improve. So in no particular order, two, four, five, and eight. Thank you so much, Darren. It is uh, off time to race number two at 12.30. That is when your bipods have to be on, and it's an outlay of uh, 540 Rand. Remember, there is uh, no problem in taking that percentage, fractional betting, possibly the way to go, as uh, Darren said, we could double up and already your fraction uh, would have uh, multiplied. All right, don't forget, uh, all to comes into the soccer Euros, uh, currently into their first week. In fact, we start the second week this evening, uh, Friday evening. It kicked off last week with the hosts uh, thrashing Scotland. And uh, we continue as we see the teams that have won and uh, topped their groups uh, for the next uh, stages. Spain looking pretty good. But uh, talking about winning, take a win. Uh, number, number, maiden juvenile plate is race three. It's for Phillies over the 1450 leg. One of the PA, we should be off at five past to one. And in the betting to race, and number three, we have a Willow Wild back on the high felt after a trip to the KZN region and not disgraced. 11 to 10, number eight, Stormy Sunday, 28 to 10, 8 to 1 about the nine, a two step queen. It is tens and better bar those. Now, the favorite Willow Wild, Mr. Burrows, came through to KZN at Scottsville, found one too good in the form of Tinny Prince Lose, the, um, the one smart cookie, and then a horse that was two lengths behind a Willow Wild who ran second on that occasion, uh, has come out to win, and that is the spelling bee for the Canamere Stable. That form in uh, this kind of a race, would that hold up, KZN form? Um, it looks solid. Uh, this is the best bet on the card, Cecil. Um, her, she came back after a short break, was stepped up to 1,200 metres, made a lot of progress late. She was gaining at the finish. She was beaten by one smart cookie, who takes a part later on. There's been a direct winner already from three runners, and um, the 14.50 is going to suit. So this is the best bet on the card, 
And if you're looking for trebles for the weekend, I would go Willow Wild onto Cape Town one stripe into Sunday, oh, my boy Lollipop, and you might get a decent price. We'll take, take, take that uh, down, Mr. Burrows. We will uh, certainly take that on board. A Willow Wild best bet at the term team at 12 to 10, easy to back, but the earlier the better is uh, the uh, key advice there. 400 Rand is the suggested outlay from uh, Darren, and it is at, uh, currently at 12 to 11 to 10, 12 to 10. I'm sure you can get a stretch. Big improvement from the favourite in race number four. That is the first leg of the pick six at the term team where we're racing on the inside track. If you're just joining us, welcome to Waited to Win, proudly sponsored by Betway. This is a tap for racing app made and played for, for Phillies and Mayors over the mile. And the favourite is Streisand, and that is at 19 to 10. Recently back from a break, a lengthy break, and a satisfactory return is the Roy Magda trained number two, Easy On Me, in the colours of John Finlayson as a two to one. The same. And a silver parasol is at five to one, eight to one, and a better bar. Those first leg of the pick six, Mr. Burrows, uh, 1600 meters, the trip, Streisand. The draw there is a five, and uh, the market rival at uh, two to one or thereabouts. Easy on me, drawn at six, so draws no problem. A field of a nine. How do we play that first leg of the pick six? Well, I thought three runners was enough. Now, Streisand uh, was stepped up in trip last time out, went to the front, was caught late, only beaten a length and a half by Peace Treaty, and the mile could suit. It all depends. Uh, if the mile isn't out of her reach, then she could be the horse to beat. You've got this fully easy on me that ran a very good debut behind Tamil Tigress. There were winners from that form line, returned after a lengthy break, was beaten three and a half lengths by a sneak preview. I thought a bit disappointing, but obviously was in need of the run and can improve. And then Silver Parasol. Her debut was a great one at nine to 10 on, behind Vision of Peace, who's won again. But after that, I don't know what happened. Uh, she's had three starts, changed stables, just hasn't improved. I've included her because I think she's got ability, but she's not showing it. Given all things, uh, that is still a pretty inexpensive outlay of uh, 6,750 rand at two. Your pick six it starts race number four. The three horses in that first leg at two, seven, and eight. And then it's the two horses that we'll discuss when we go to race five, which comes up next. Pick six starts race four, 20 to two. If you're just joining us, we're previewing racing on the inside track of Turpentina for Saturday. Race number five is the first leg of the first the jackpot. Now, this is the maiden plate over the mile. And uh, once again, sent off as uh, odds on. Perhaps uh, come uh, race time, that is the quarter past two, will be a Shinto Shrine in the colors of Kirstom Investments. It is uh, Tony Peter and Calvin Abeb, and that is at uh, 15 to 20. The one deception pass has done everything but win 28 to 10, 8 to 1, and a better bar, though. Uh, the uh, floodgates are going to open for the Azzy stable sooner rather than later, Darren. And hopefully Deception Pass could be just uh, that uh, turning point. Um, I do believe so. You know, this is, uh, to me, the, the first selection of mine uh, because Shinto Shrine last time out had every chance and was beaten late. And it was uh, pretty much a blanket finish the first four past the post. And I don't know how that form line is going to stand up because the penultimate start, there were seven run, seven direct runners for zero winners. And this was a deception pass, ran behind Halbert, Deer, and Tyrion Lannister. Marco Frappe is not a bad horse. Uh, he came back at the finish strongly, and I think the mile is going to be ideal. They've put the blinkers on. Um, for me, deception pass 28 to 10 could be value. Um, but I'm not saying that Shinto Shrine can't win. So the two of them just go those two in the exotics. I think I definitely agree with you. Deception Pass will really hold thumbs up for all concerned. And in both instances, because uh, the Peter Stable also had a bit of a quiet spell in the last uh, week or so. That is the two horses for race five. First leg of jackpot one. And that is a quarter pass to the off time.
Okay, so we get on to the second jackpot, at least the commencement of a jackpot at two. And I think the word trappy certainly is the first one that springs to mind. But the favorite coming off a recent gelding in the colors of the Morris Fontaine is the number nine, a royal guy. They gave me the green light, uh, having a uh, eighth outing, all things being equal. Diego de Gouveia from a good draw of one. And that is at a three to one. Nine to two is the three scallywag, the seven tamarisk tree. Tamarask tree, rather, is at uh, 15 to 2. It is 10 to 1 and uh, bets about those. I think if memory serves right in your exotics, this is a field racer. Uh, for me, Cecil, um, yes, this is the field race. Now, this horse Royal Guard is very decent. Um, he's obviously got his issues. He's a five-year-old and he's only had seven starts. But when he's won, um, he's won with ease. And uh, last time out, he returned after a break. And he was beaten fourth. Um, he just never kicked on. But uh, he's been gulded in January. And he's now back. I'm not sure of his well-being. So he could drift off the boards. If he shortens, then you know that they've got him right and ready. But um, I, I don't trust this race at all. I could touch on the Peter Runner's Scallywag, Kayamai, Tamarisk Tree, um, and the list goes on and on. Even a horse like Command Pilot being very disappointing, but he's got the ability, and maybe just he needs gelding to see the best of him again. In is not out of it. He's a course and distance winner. Three runs for win and two places over course and distance. Um, and the rest, a horse like we are, the Logans, four kilos off his back. Uh, he could bounce back. Second run is a gelding, but I'm not taking any chances. I've also included the reserve runner. So the scratching in the race, we will double up if the favorite wins. Thank you so much. And I think many would agree with you. Many fundies would go in your corner there that it is a trappy looking race number six. But if all things are well with number nine Royal Guide, that sounds to be Darren's first choice. That is jackpot two commencing at 10 minutes to three. Don't forget, all to come is accessible on our website. That is our sponsor's website, uh, Betway. That is soccer in uh, to the uh, big race uh, meetings that are forthcoming. Even this weekend's uh, racing, and a case in point is race number seven at uh, Turpentine, where we're racing on the inside track. Well drawn and uh, looking for that uh, second career win is a corner piece of runner, and that goes by the name Chocolate Soldier at 22 to 10. So easy to back Pendragon. 6 to 1, 15 to 2, about another informer, uh, two year old who's just come back recently from a gelding. Kim will kill there, 15 to 2, bracketed at 15 to 2, with the 7 Sahara Dawn at 15 to 2. Right, so we're looking at the chocolate soldier, Mr. Burrows, that looks to be in a good form, and the only thing missing is that uh, thir second career win from a lightly raced career of uh, just the four runs. Uh, Cecil, this horse is very speedy. But what I liked about him last time out, they didn't go too fast with him, and he still stayed on at the finish. So it wasn't like cheap speed where he went seven lengths clear and got swallowed up late. Um, it's like he stayed on all the way to the line, which was um, a much better performance. But he's drawn one, he's speedy, he's going to go to the front. Catch me if you can. Um, if he gets away... He could stay there because this is the inside track, that short run in. Uh, so Chocolate Soldier is a massive runner. You've got Pen Dragon. He's had 10 runs over course and distance for two wins, five seconds and a fourth. So he's only missed the first four uh, twice in 10 starts. He'll run well after that good second behind Fennec Fox running on strongly. And I've included the other two-year-old, King of Kill, there. He's had three comeback runs, one comeback run after Galding, fourth to Danton of Stanton. I think he could be progressive. Two, five, six, and of course, the race seven is the seventh of nine, so you could use those three as the first leg of your pick three going into that last two legs, races eight and nine. That is race seven, due off at 25 past three.
Finish the Mayor's 96, another top racer to look forward to. No features throughout the weekend, but what we lack in the terms of black type, we certainly make up for in the quality and the competition. 1,800 metres is the trip to Ameritrade at 96 for Phillies and Mayors. Race 8 is our penultimate due off at 4 o'clock, and uh, we've got the uh, 2 on the horizon at uh, 13 uh, to 10. The 8, uh, Sauta, is at uh, 18 to 10. It's uh, number 4, Little Mary Sunshine, who's got a sibling with a run on Friday at uh, Fairview 17 to 2, 12 to 1, and better bar those. Not often you actually pick up uh, the excitement or emotion from Lucky about uh, horses, but you get the feeling he hopes that uh, the two on the rise, and especially after that uh, very, very uh, decent run behind Texas Red last time out, is uh, certainly upwardly mobile. You're a pedigree's man, Mr. Burrows. 1800. Is that any problem to be concerned or reason to be concerned? Uh, Cecil, yeah, she's been at 1800 before, but that day she moved up strongly, hit the front, and she got swallowed up late by George Handel. Um, she did look a winner going through the 200, and I thought the 18 was stretching her a bit that day. Then they dropped her back to a mile, she won over 14. Um, so that is my concern. She's out of a sale in Seattle, May. Um, there's a lot of speed there, so um, I have got my question marks, but she's never missed the first three in seven starts, and she has to be a live wire. Her market rival is Ciuta, number eight on the card, who won her maiden by six lengths, beating a very moderate field. There's been nine direct winners for ze uh, nine direct runners for zero winners. And last time out, no winners as well. It says not striding out. So the market suggests it's a two-horse race. I've included Juliet Tango, Little Mary Sunshine, and Ipso Facto with those two runners. In fact, we'll be looking forward to a two result race number eight on the rise and top supports at a 13 to 10 race number eight.